on this week's weekly video fishing forecast we have the winner of the $25,000 WICC Bluefish Tournament, a preview of the current digital edition and our correspondents check in with their latest fishing information all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The digital edition is out now, and for those of you who are looking for a more humane way to fillet your fish, check out this article from Leon Leon. If you love blue core crabs as much as I do, check out this recipe from Aaron Swanson too. And if you didn't know, our government wants to place a speed restriction on your boat when fishing in the ocean. Check out Jim Hutchinson's very important read. All this and more in the current digital edition. The Tobey Boat Show is back September 16th through the 18th. Check out the latest in fishing gear and electronics. From fishing boats to personal watercraft, this show has it all. Free parking and fun for the whole family. For more info, visit nymta.com. I'm here at Miller Place Bait and Tackle where Rob Anderson waiting his winning bluefish. It's actually the unofficial winner he is of the WICC $25,000 bluefish tournament. Uh, Rob, it was so nice to join us here today. He's going to give us a little bit of the story about how the events transpired that day. How um, What happened that day actually? How did you win it? So, you know, we got out there pretty early. Um, it was a pretty good ride out there and, uh, you know, we pretty much fished with everything we had in our tackle box. We used from diamond jays to bucktails to live bait and frozen bait and you know one of them seemed to work better than the other but we fished the incoming tide okay. and um, you know we were out it probably for a good couple hours before um, we hit into that fish and um, I actually caught it on a fluke rod. Okay so it was a good fight. It just was like it was definitely challenging um, but I had them really good it was through the bottom part of the jaw right so it wasn't coming off but it took a while to get him up, okay. and uh, he saw the boat a couple times and dove a That's couple times. Bluefish always like that. Right, yeah, the guy yeah. on the net was just all over the boat, just like I was. And, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, we got him on board, and uh, as soon as he hit the deck, we kind of knew that. Uh, that was a good fish. Yeah, he'd be yeah. up there. And so, in what did that fish actually take for more? What did it? Hit? I'd hit on the live bait. Hit on the live yeah. bait. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. No, that's great, man. And like I said, you know. An unofficial winner, you know, you got to do a polygraph test still, yep, but still no, pro no yep. problems with that. Nope. Um, congratulations. Thank you, sir. That's awesome, man. Thank really, you very congratulations. Much. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. And if we check over to the calendar, we have the Tobey Boat Show coming up on the 16th through the 18th, and there's a good chance I'll be there as well. And that same weekend, the DEC will be holding their third annual Women's Fishing Expo. This is a rain or shine event. Seats are limited and pre-registration is required. For more information or to register, call the DEC's iFish NY program at 631-444-0283. The weekly video fishing forecast is now available as a podcast. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts and subscribe to get all the great audio content. In other news, we are excited to bring back the big show at the Long Island Hilton. This year will be better than ever as now the show will cover surf, inshore, and offshore. So mark your calendar for September 22nd. And as always, the first 500 through the door will get a goodie bag worth more than the price of admission alone. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows, you've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers, now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them, ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. Now let's go around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. Out on the West End, fluke activity seems to be getting better with more keepers in the mix and fish to 7 pounds coming up from the local reefs and pieces. Sea bass to 4 pounds are also being found on the outside pieces too. In the bay, work the incoming tide from Jones Inlet to the Wantaw Bridge. Blue fishing has been good in Jamaica Bay also and on the outside towards New Jersey. 
Along the central south shore, the fluking continues to stay strong in the bays. The inside still has better action than the outside around the reefs, but if you do go outside, you have a better shot at larger fish. Try getting some peanut bunker for good fluke action since this is a main bait the fish are keyed in on. On the north shore of the island, the stripers and bluefish remain very active out by the middle ground. Porgies are still chewing along the entire north shore while sea bass have become a little more aggressive towards the north fork. Fluking between Huntington and Mount Sinai has also proven itself to be a good option during the week too. In Montauk, it's been a decent mix of porgies, sea bass and fluke and some stripers with some offshore species such as yellowfin and bluefin coming in as close as 10 miles south of the point. Porgies and sea bass are on the rocky bottom between the point and block, while fluke can be caught south of the point at about 100 feet and around the windmills at about 100 feet. Captain Savio of the fish hooker let me know he did have an easy limit over the weekend with fluke up to 10 pounds. Additionally, way out in the deep, Captain Stephen Dutton and crew fished 120 miles southeast of Fire Island Inlet for this impressive catch of yellow fins and big eye. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Owen has the weekend weather forecast. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and uh, see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, websites, weather tools, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview. On the upcoming weekend, so we start out with the water temps. Still warm, still a lot of 70s all throughout the island and the sound. Uh, this weekend's going to feature some ocean swells, some of those rollers of heave coming in. Uh, you know, the waves showing two to fours, four to eights. You know, they're not going to be like uh, tight waves, not the chop. It's more of the rolls coming in. So watch out around the inlets during low tide especially. Fire Island, Jones Inlet, East Rockaway, Shinnecock, Mauritius. If you're taking the boat out, going out in the ocean. You know, just be aware of some of those breakers coming in during low tide. And again, that continues into Sunday morning. I think it starts to lay down Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. It's not going to be the wind this weekend. I think it's okay. Light northwest to westerly breeze on Saturday, maybe 5 to 10, maybe up to 15 knots, but nothing too big. Sunday, a little more of a southwest breeze coming in, maybe 5 to 10, 5 to 15. But again, just watch those ocean rollers throughout the weekend. We've seen it before. High tides, uh, full moon too. Uh, north shore for midday, south shore about 7, 8 a.m., High temperatures look good, 70s and 80s throughout Saturday and Sunday, so not too hot, not too bad. Let's take a uh, look at the Guru, and there you go, Saturday. Uh, not much wind, little light west, uh, you know, northwest breeze, about 5 to 10. You notice this, though, waves and meters, you multiply by about 3, so that takes you maybe to like 4 or 5 feet in spots. You know, it's a long wave swell, just watch out for that. And then on Sunday, it's more of a west-southwest. Not bad, you know, but again, the swells start to come down a little bit here. I think it'll be a little bit better. But just be safe around those inlets. Watch for the rollers and the breakers all along the weekend there. Uh, be safe. Catch them up. Have a great time. Have a great weekend. Matt, back to you. It's now time for our correspondents to check in. Let's start it off with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thanks, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody, from Montauk this week. Uh, fall is really starting to kick in. Um... Fishing still pretty quality and still consistent. Uh, big news is basically the uh, offshore stuff, um, tuna, mahi, anything like that, yellowfin, small bluefins, has been pretty consistent. Um, even from relatively close to shore, you know, anywhere from 12 miles south of Block Island in Montauk all the way out to the canyons. Got a couple tuna pictures on that. Um, Striped bass fishing slowing down a little bit. Guys still going over to Block Island, picking away at a couple here. Fluking sea bass, porgies still going strong. Uh, south side of Montauk's loaded with tons of bunker. We have sharks right on the beach. Uh, we've had reports of giant bluefin tuna feeding like within a mile off the beach. So all the factors are really starting to come into play to make for a really good fall event. False albacore finally showed up this past um, Labor Day weekend. We were chasing them Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. That's good news for any of the light tackle fly fishing guys. Um, uh, this cold weather the last couple days should really start getting the bait moving, and we got the full moon coming up. Um, my event coming up October 9th at the Mo uh, Montauk Lake Club is my Castoberfest, my Sage Fly Rod Castoberfest. It's Sunday, October 9th from 2 to 7. We'll be doing barbecue from North Fork Ironworks and beer from Montauk Brewing. And we're raffling off a full uh, sage rod and reel setup. Um, prizes by Grundins, Fish Pond, and others. All right, so I'll be posting that over the next couple weeks. And get out and go fishing this weekend. Thank you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Well, I hope everyone had a great Labor Day weekend and was able to catch some fish. Um, kind of exciting, starting to get some reports of Albies. 
uh, more around Shinnecock Inlet and to the east where they you know usually kind of hang out this time of year. Uh, not too many blitzes have popped up in the inlet yet, but uh, you know really of, of most of the albies that I've caught in Shinnecock Inlet, most of them been off a of blind cast and not into an actual blitz. So um, exciting to hear that. A lot of people have run into them as well, coming back in from offshore and um, you know that the fall run is happening seen some more small bass that haven't been around back in the bays and in the inlet and off the beach uh, a couple of random reports of uh, people drifting either bunker or live spot through the inlets have gotten into some uh, slot bass so those around as well as you know the typical grind surf casters you know working through the night have been getting into some fish as well so pretty exciting stuff there fluke bites still on Weak fish have kind of shown up in the bays, both during the day and at night, a little bit more at night. And uh, with all the bait that's around, the spearing, peanut bunker, shad, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, those soft plastics that, you know, the bass will go out, the weak fish will go after as well. So um, pretty exciting stuff in the Shinnecock Canal and a lot of other kind of bay spots, a lot of puffer fish, which is pretty cool. Um, so kind of everything coming together, a lot of options, yellowfin tuna, Bite still kind of going on off Quambra, but he was out over the weekend, got into a few of them on the troll. We'd also take a run out by the squid boats that if you're at the beach store in the, in the distance offshore, um, we didn't have any luck, we didn't see anything, but perfect ride, ton, a ton of bunker pots out there, sort of a lot of dolphins. So a lot of life going on, a lot of opportunities to fish, which is really exciting coming up on this time of the year. So get out there and fish, leave a comment below. And a uh, reminder, September 22nd, Fisherman Show at the Huntington Hilton. Gonna be a great time, ton of really, really cool seminars, vendors, giveaways, raffles, the whole nine yards. So um, really nice time also just for the whole community kind of get together, run into people and swap a few fishing stories before we all get completely obsessed with the fall run. So anyway, looking forward to that. Looking forward to doing some fishing this weekend. I hope you are too. Back to you, Matt. Thanks. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Captain Al here, Fire Island Report. Fishing is good. Weekend weather looks good, but offshore is going to be real lumpy. In fact, maybe not even fishable, We're talking like five feet. So it's going to be an inshore weekend and there's plenty of fish to catch. I'm have a, consistently catching some keeper fluke every day and a limit of weak fish, a nice fish anywhere from three to six or seven pounds. So uh, weak fishing is hot, fluke fishing is decent, and bottom fishing is red hot and snappers everywhere. I mean, and now they're really good size. Uh, what else? Uh, let's see. There's a tuna bite going on down off a of Rockaway, but you know, this weekend that's not gonna happen unless you have like a 95 footer and you wanna give it a shot. But uh, anyway, uh, if you want the full report, check out skimmeroutdoors.com for my full report every week. And that's about it for this week, Matt. Take care, see you next week. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, finally, finally, we're getting some needed rain. Uh, you know, it's it, it's a good rain. It's an all-day slow soaker. Already, the rivers upstate are showing. They're bouncing back. They're getting back up to normal levels. Uh, the spring creeks will definitely be working better because the, the water's coming in. Um, all in all, it's a great thing. I'm very happy to see this. But it is my day off, and I actually am out here... Uh, at the surf there's not a lot of wind and i'm playing out with my new two-handed rod that i got uh, a temple fork uh, lk legacy and i'm looking forward to fishing with this this fall I, I had a very good week as far as my wife and i decided to go on the beach and it's my second time that i have ever been on the beach and uh with the help of the liba the Long Island Beach Buggy Association and the, the knowledge they helped me too. I felt very confident and we had a great time. We're looking forward to doing that all fall long here on Long Island and also out in Montauk. Uh, who knows where it's going to take us. Um, but the fishing was okay. We caught some uh, small fluke and some sea robins, but we, we had a beautiful sunrise, a sunset, I'm sorry, sunset and, uh, and a nice dinner. So it was great. Freshwater fishing, everything is bouncing back. Everything is coming back really strong now. Uh, the cooler temperatures uh, with this rain, I predict it's going to be a great week. Now, mark it on your calendar. Thursday the 22nd, 
the fisherman is going to be doing, of course, the fisherman is doing their, uh, it's going to be surf inshore fishing show. I will be there tying flies and demonstrating how to tie some teasers and, and just and bait fish patterns. So make sure it's on your calendar and check it out. Also, September 17th, uh, the DEC is running their women's only fly fishing over at the Connect Quad. There again, I'll be there demonstrating fly tying and talking to everybody about the joys of fly fishing. Uh, so if you have a significant other or a wife that might be want to uh, try fly fishing, it's a great time. Just go to their website and uh, so it's, it's, you have to make a reservation. But great day. Last year was terrific. Do it. All right. And so to next week, tie lines and pray for some more rain. We need it. From Jamaica Bay, Chris Landry checks in. Chris. Thanks, Matt. Fluking continues to be super strong inside and outside of Jamaica Bay. My boy Jeff, a.k.a. JMZ NYC, got these doormats. Phil Salvo continues to prove himself to be the king of fluke. Jumping on charters like Gypsy and Marilyn Jean and other charters is where you can really get these fluke. Um, also inside the bay, bluefish are blitzing like crazy. There's tons of bait. There's schoolie sized stripers. The water temperatures are starting to go down. That fall run should be in full swing soon. Outside of Jamaica Bay, bluefin tuna bite is still very slow. Rockfish charters are the goats. They are the go-to charter for uh, getting on these bluefin regularly. Otherwise, it's very slow, which leads to a lot of chatter on channel 68. And I just wanted to say, let's be kind to each other out there. There's way too much yelling uh, and degrading on channel 68. If somebody is uh, drifting into your spread, let them know kindly you're drifting into my spread. There's too much name calling. Uh, when people are anonymous, they get real bold. All right, so let's remind each other to be kind, uh, be cool out there. We need each other out there. All right, and uh, so let's get out there and get tight thank you and back to you matt let's check in with max finch from the connecticut side of the western south there's rumors some hardtails going around we haven't seen any albi show up yet but we've seen some spanish mackerel and a couple bonito caught places to look would be like uh off penfield reef is usually a good early season hot spot across on the north shore from like port jeff to crane's neck into smithtown bay and then middle ground off stratford uh, locally around us, we've seen one confirmed Spanish mackerel caught. That was on the back side of Kakini, so that's a good place to check. Other than that, the striper and blue bite at 28C, and then the diamond jig and bite at 11B is still red hot right now. Outgoing at 11B, the bite's been really good. And then on the incoming, guys are switching over to 28C. And then on the slacker tides, they're coming up and pushing a lot of this small bait that we have around. There's all different sizes of uh, peanut bunker around, from really juveniles to midsize. Throwing lures like the dock, super strike popper, small Hayden spook, stuff like that. And then our black sea bass bite is still concentrated on our deeper water wrecks. We really won't see a lot of these uh, fish move in until like mid of the blackfish season opener. Guys will start catching them shallow. But if you do want to get on some sea bass, definitely 50 foot or more on some deep water wrecks. Clam chum, they'll take jigs, you know, high low with bait. Fluking is still pretty slow. I mean, guys are grinding it out right now to catch some keepers and to try to fill their limit. But still the same spots, you know, behind can 24, can 26, fish in the hump. You know, you can downsize your profile this time of year with all the small bait, bump in shallow, try some deeper water, you name it. The porgy bite's still red hot, and you know, on our shallow water reefs, deeper water reefs, and from the beaches. And then to our west, down towards, you know, past 32A to Port, uh, off of uh, Port Chester down to like the Throg's Neck, we've seen some epic bluefish blitzes. I mean, we're see I've seen videos of acres of bluefish demolishing all different size baits. I mean, it's pretty nuts down there. And we've seen it throughout the bluefish tournament, and it's still going on this week. Thanks and good luck. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt. Hope all is well. Hey, guys. Mike MG Sentry here for our Anglers of Legend Sport Fishing Boat Works. Well, got to say, went out, managed to find some time on Sunday, headed out with my pops and a client, Justin, for some uh, giant bluefin tuna. And uh, to no surprise, we ended up hooking up twice. Uh, the first tuna, uh, guesstimated weight on that bad boy was around 730 pounds. Uh, after a couple of hours of battle, 
I had some failure with the uh, wind down leader, which ended up getting stuck on the guide. Wouldn't let me go past it. Ended up hoisting it with my hands. And uh, it's very tough doing that. It's literally a battle for the ages. Um, I felt like I was pretty much playing tug of war with a C-130 aircraft. This tune in particular, I, I'm no expert. I'm not a wizard. You know, I caught several and landed several giants, well over 73 inches. Um, last year, the biggest one was 114 inches. That was caught in release. And that tuna didn't fight that hard. This tuna was smaller than that, was around 730 pounds, um, probably somewhere between 107, 188 inches. And this, li this tuna literally kicked my ass. It fought so hard. It was so angry, so mean. Just 70 pounds of drag nonstop. It was like I was using a Sepco reel. Uh, pen 70 definitely couldn't handle it so it was a little you know disappointing but she, the line snapped right at the boat and uh, she swam off peacefully and it was considered landed so it was definitely a great reward um you know would have been nice landing it and you know selling it off but hey it is what it is but um yeah commercial season just started for us and uh we'll be back on the water if the uh, weather definitely uh, cooperates this week we're looking for some four to sixes out there so what i was using is bunker and for you guys definitely check your equipment every single time i use my equipment a lot and last time i checked it was over a week ago and to my surprise we had some definitely failures and never reuse uh your wind down leaders you catch a tuna with it pretty much just throw that leader away throw that ball bearing swivel away consider it garbage that's my tip for today guys stay tuned hopefully we'll put something on the map tight lines have a great time back to you matt last we'll be checking with captain ben gilmore from marina pez vela down in costa rica hey there guys welcome here to costa rica and the marina pez vela we got this week's fishing report for you right now the billfish bite has been pretty good this week just yesterday I was out there and caught a couple of sailfish on my boat good day but one of the boats in the fleet had an insane day one blue marlin and 11 sailfish just incredible fishing another one of the boats had three blue marlin yesterday and there was some nice dorado and some yellowfin tuna a bit further out the tuna fishing these past few weeks has been really good most of the fish have been mid-sized around 30 to 50 pounds but we've had some 80 to 100 pound fish as well Dorado season, we've got Mahi Mahi, is going to get really cranking over the next month or so, and that will peak in November, which is the best season for Mahi Mahi. Hope to see you guys down here in Costa Rica soon. Until next week, this is Ben Gilmore, and back to you. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. We will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.